Apps basically, it's a uh, team of people that are adding uh, vulnerable people on the map. They target areas where the map doesn't exist. So I'm Mark. I'm at Development Seed. This talk is about rewarding contributors in real time. We worked with the Red Cross to redesign the Missing Maps website, missingmaps.org. So if you go there, there's a new um, website if you haven't seen it. And the major contributions that we've made is add user profiles. So can everyone see that in the back? Great. Sorry? No. Okay. Huh. Yeah, it's not in the character that is. I thought you were gonna have to like effect. Nope, it's not an effect. Thank you again. Let's see, is are all of them pixelated? Yeah, Hmm, is that a resolution issue? Can I stop or no? And these are pixelated too. Jeez. Okay, well, you can listen to my voice and follow. <laughs> Excuse me? No, it looks totally fine. But, um, or actually I have a PDF, maybe I'll just show the PDF. I'll switch to a PDF now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Um, thank you, kind stranger. Uh, okay, so Dan here has now a user profile on Missing Maps. These are live things that are now on the Missing Maps website. Basically, if you've edited in the past few months on Missing Maps and used the Missing Maps hashtag in your chain set, you now have a user profile. You have badges to aspire to, and um, you can uh, uh, you have a user profile, you have badges, and you'll see it. It's really nice. Uh, another thing that we worked on is leaderboards. So this is for uh, mapathons. You can now, if you use a hashtag, have a leaderboard for that mapathon. My talk is going to be focusing on hashtags and metadata, um, basically the guts of OSM, uh, of how we did this. Reward mechanisms, like why are we doing this? Why are we rewarding people in this way? And the open source components that hopefully you can contribute to. So a chain set in OSM is basically data and metadata. When you commit, when you commit an ID, you basically create two files. You create a data file, which has all the geo information, and you have a metadata file, which is also stored, which contains you know, different types of information. And a lot of people here at State of the Map talked about metadata. Toby, for example, showed us uh, you know, analysis of metadata. And uh, I'll show you what a metadata file looks like. So first of all, this is a change set. You've got comment there, which is like auto SM, mapping buildings for Swaziland. And then you have that geographic information. You also have like things like use the ID editor and, uh, and the locale. This is what's stored in OSM. And you know, for a programmer, this is very exciting to me. For others, it's just a bunch of gibberish. Uh, it, and it has all that data that I showed in the previous slide. It has that tag, which has the comment, the locale, the imagery used, created by. And this is stuff that you can grab from OSM and you can start analyzing it. And we do that because when you analyze geographic information in OSM, 
there are a ton of tools to do that. And that's most, mostly about you know, how OSM changes over time the, in terms of geodata. But the metadata is more a statement about the community and the community growth. So analyzing the metadata using, um, uh, using various tools can give you an idea about how OSM is moving forward. Now, let's talk about hashtags. Hashtags kind of split the community in, in uh, their use, and there's, uh, there's some talk about that in the mailing list. Don't look at the mailing list. Hashtags are really useful. <laughs> so why are they useful? Hashtags are spatially unbounded. As in, if you use a hashtag, that's to create a grouping of change sets that is not constrained within a spatial community. Hashtags, for example, track events. So if you're on the tasking manager and you use like hashtag HaroSM Nepal earthquake, you group all the change sets that that are related to the Nepal earthquake. And then you can analyze that and, for example, create a tool like Jennings did for the Nepal earthquake of change sets per hour to analyze the community response. We see a large, large spikes like this around hot activations. This is a little fun tool that Development Seed built, which is tracking trending OSM hashtags in the past six hours. Now, for example, you can see that you've got large hashtags like hashtags missing maps, hashtag map give, hashtag Peace Corp. These are recurring hashtags. As well as, you know, activations or, or tasks in the, in the uh, tasking manager. Hashtags then track groups. What I mean by groups is large data teams. So, if you're, for example, JP Morgan Chase, and you want to track your users, you know you can use hashtags like um, JPMC Summer Hire. I'm not sure what what that's tracking, but for the partner page for JPMC on the Missing Maps website, that's really useful for them to track their contributors over time. We can see that now they have 601 contributors, uh, and they map these buildings and roads. And they do that through a combination of the metadata and the feature data, which I'll uh, talk about. This is another uh, tool by Pascal Nice, who um, we've used as an inspiration for a lot of the tools we built. You can consider missing maps as a data team. Uh, it's one of the largest data teams right now. And uh, by analysis of hashtags, you know, you could see that there are at least 10,000 contributors. Um, these are the bounding boxes uh, of, you know, some of the missing maps hashtags over time. So we talked about hashtags and metadata. I want to talk about feedback loops. Now that we have, uh, now that we analyze this community, how do we go back and make it a bit better? So how do we make better mappers? We can do this raw analysis on the metadata, but rewarding contributors is a cool aspect that you know, we can strive for. Once we reward contributors, we want to encourage better mapping, encourage validation. And that's uh, sort of why we build the new Missing Maps website in that way. Mappers are, um, uh, you know, some of them are one-off mappers. Some of them are, uh, you know, long-time mappers. But we want to stabilize that framework a bit. So what mo motivates contributors? We've got three types that we, we look into regularly. And, you know, their motivations over time. You've got idealistic mapping. You've got... Uh, so idealistic mapping is mapping your own community um, and, and striving for OSM as like the best 
open source community in the world. You've got reactive mapping, and this is reacting to events like um, the Nepal earthquake. And you've got institutional mapping, which we've also touched in this conference, uh, where you've got these large data teams mapping um, within their institution. And you know something Dale uh, told me the, uh, a few hours ago is we want to strive towards a complete mapper. So I put this slide up. A uh, complete mapper is a mapper that wants to map locally in their neighborhood, but also participate in the greater social ideal of OSM. And we, through our research, we uh, looked into what motivates a mapper. Uh, we looked at taxonomy of um, uh, what motivates users on different platforms, and uh, that research showed that there are four <laughs> basic types of motivation, well, at least that we know about. Immersion. Um, immersion means feeling part of the mapping effort. We do that by creating a user profile where you have, oh, you belong to these projects. Uh, you've mapped all these days, so we give them a calendar and uh, to show you know, how, how long they've mapped. We show them their latest badge. We show them you know, quick statistics. Achievement is another motivator, and this is more for completionist types. They want to get all the badges. And when I say all the badges, we want to look at that dichotomy of local and social mapping. We want to reward people that, on the ground, uh, add you know, GPX traces that l validate on the tasking manager, and there are badges for that. But also, uh, the Mapathon or badge for participating in Mapathons. And we also create badge progress so that you know what badges you're going to get. Cooperation, and this goes without saying for missing maps. Uh, cooperation is essential in you know, creating mapathons and spaces for people to map together. And this appeals to uh, social types of uh, social interactions and in, uh, player type, in uh, user types. And competition. This is for um, you know, other types of users, which, and we're not talking about destructive competition. We're talking about you know, the healthy type of competition that comes from pitting a school versus another school to map out more of the map. Here I'm showing um, three institutions, Missing Maps, which has a million edits, uh, Map Give, and Peace Corps use the platform in different ways, but hopefully you know, that number is going to grow. So as a recap, we have these four types of motivation that we try to target with the new Missing Maps website with these user profiles and leaderboards. Immersion, achievement, cooperation and competition to get better retention for these mappers. But we want to also close the feedback loop. So we said the feedback loop wants to strive at getting mappers to map once and then come back to other mapathons. So maybe, for example, they get these badges and then, or they map the task and then we send them a thank you, or we um, send an email reminding them to come to the platform. I'm sure there are ways that we can do this in a non-invasive and non-annoying way, like other apps do. Um, we're open to feedback on you know, how to close the feedback loop. We don't do it just yet, but I'd like to revisit this, uh, revisit the data in six months and see, has the new Missing Maps website and you know, this strategy of using hashtags affected uh, community in some way.
Now, I'm going to switch gears a bit and go more into programming and developer mode. Who here considers themselves a developer and not? OK. So for those people that uh, somehow miss something, please stop me, and I'll explain it. This system stands on the shoulders of giants here. Overpass and the planet files. Who knows Overpass? I think a lot of people in the room know Overpass. Overpass creates these augmented diffs. It tracks OSM every minute, and every minute creates uh, these very, very large uh, commits which which have the geographic information before and after the commit. Now, this is not found on other tools in OSM, and we're very grateful to the Overpass developers for developing a tool uh, that creates the augmented diffs. Planet is a repository of metadata files. We talked about the metadata files and why they're important. Um, they contain you know, comment history and hashtags. And what we do is we take the metadata files, we combine them with the augmented diffs to create this rich diff, or some other people call them real change sets, because they contain the comment that we use or the metadata that we use for filtering the hashtags, but also contain the feature data needed for creating building counts or uh, kilometers of roads, and that's what we use for the system. So a little system diagram. It's in ASCII for fun. Uh, so there we have Planet as a data source and Overpass as a data source. And they go into a, a piece of software that development seed built called Planet Stream and spits out the real diff, or uh, sorry, rich diff. This rich diff goes into a cache, which stores uh, map data for the leaderboards, uh, trending hashtags so you can find the leaderboards that are you know, happening right now, and also go into like a task queue that calculates aggreg aggregate statistics. Now, of course, uh, oh, and then we combine all of these and serve an API, which is the missing maps API. And it's open, and anyone can uh, use it for their leaderboards. If you don't like how the leaderboards look, you can make your own leaderboard with the missing maps data. Of course, of course, every single component there is open source. And every single component needs contributors to keep it stable, keep it running. So we invite the community to, to work with us. And tomorrow, we're going to have a, um, you know, in, during the hack day, we're going to talk about these components. We're going to talk about the rich diffs and uh, aggregate statistics. So I invite you to come around 10 for the hack day, and we can talk about it. We will talk technical uh, rich diffs, but we, will, we also want to tackle the use cases for the statistics on a higher level. So how do, what do we need from these statistics? What is useful in a mapathon? So please come tomorrow and, and let's discuss it. These are the repos that, were, uh, that, that contain all the code. You've got the OSM stats repo, and you know, we're not tied to the name because everything is called OSM stats right now. But if you find one, file an issue. The workers, which contain the aggregate statistics. The API, which is the missing maps API. The website. And Planet Stream that does that aggregation. What's next? Uh, we just turned on the system for all hashtags. So now it's looking at all hashtags instead of just missing maps. But we're still monitoring it, so don't create a ton of mapathons in the next week. 
uh, more stable diffs. So a, lot, uh, a few of these components are, um, are not as resilient to uh, hiccups in the OSM database. For example, if overpass is, a, overpass is, is great at creating the augmented diffs, but if there's a problem in the original database and overpass goes down, then the system can lag for a few hours until overpass comes up. One thing that we want to talk about tomorrow is how to make overpass more resilient. Uh, real quick, I just want to finish. Uh, we want to integrate this back into OSM, into the uh, infrastructure, and we want to talk about closing the loop. So, real quick, we talked about hashtags and metadata, reward mechanisms, open source analytics, and I'm inv inviting everyone to contribute. Contribute to mapathons, contribute to missing maps. That's uh, my handle, Kamikut. And I'll tweet out the slides, and I'd love to have a discussion about this. Uh, so with that, do we have time for questions? Yeah, we've got about three and a half minutes for questions or comments. Okay, and if you don't have, uh, if you don't get uh, your question, you know, you can always find me. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, what do you think about opening this system uh, not just to missing map chain sets, but for the entire open street map? Yes, so we want to look at that, and I touched a bit about it that we want to get all hashtags and build statistics on ha all hashtags. Now, hashtags are used in chain set comments. Ideally, these hashtags would be in an ex an extra tag in the metadata that you could add with ID, but this is a good way to, um, you know, to track these events and groups and data teams. Uh, yeah, I understand the thing about hashtags, but uh, I want to earn badges without participating in missing maps. <laughs> I'm so sorry? I want to earn badges maybe in some other leaderboard, but without participating in the maps, uh, right, maps right. project. Right, right, and like I said, you can have your own data team, you can have your own hashtag, and then, they, and then you can run your own API, and everything is open source, you can read the documentation for that, run your own API, and then have that uh, feed into your Mapathon. Like I said, we're looking at uh, possible ways that this happens inside OSM, so that this is like, your user profile rather than just a missing maps profile. And then that user profile has badges and statistics and um, it, would, it would be great if we could have that integration. And you know, if, uh, if you know a, um, a way to get to there, uh, to get to that, I'd love to talk about it. We have time for one more, I think. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. early anecdotal evidence that uh, the badges are increasing user contribution or increasing user retention? Right, so it's a bit early for that. We've only deployed the, uh, the system for the past couple of months, well, without bugs, right? Uh, we wanna revisit this in six months. We know that the people that are already contributing to Missing Maps uh, want to contribute because they feel um, you know, some sort of satisfaction that they're contributing. But we have a lot of um, user profiles, like the one that I showed with, with people that map every day. And I wanna see if that person you know, that mapped every day, uh, you know, look at uh, their history before we deployed and see if they also mapped every day. So that could be a good way to, to do it. Um, is this Piaco DK in the room? No? Well, uh, good job. <laughs> okay. We need uh, to leave it there because we've got to attend a closing session, but thank you. Great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>